What is up guys? Today's video is going to be all about the classes I took in my sophomore year at Georgia Tech. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kyle and I'm a rising senior at Georgia Tech and this is actually the third installment in a series I'm doing where I document every single class that I've taken in my time at college. I decided for sophomore year that I'd just make one video instead of talking about each semester separately, so I'll try to keep it quick, but apologies if this video gets a little bit long. And with that, I won't waste any more time, let's get started by talking about the first semester of my sophomore year. The first class that we're going to talk about is Math 2550, also known as Intro to Multivariable Calculus. So this is a two credit class that I had on Mondays and Wednesdays from 3 to 3.50, and it also had a recitation which also served as the testing period on Thursdays. Just like in the first two installments of the series, I have the GPAs right here. So the average GPA for this class was a 2.77, which is pretty low, and only 20.1% of students got an A, 33.9% of students got a B, 22.2% of students got a C, and 16.4% of students withdrew from the class. As you can probably tell from that GPA, this was a pretty challenging class, and I think one of the biggest issues was that they were trying to cram too much material into too little time. Since it was only two credits and we met twice a week for the normal class, we didn't really have a ton of time in class and we tried to get through a lot of material. I was fortunate enough to be able to get an A in that class, but there were a lot of times in which concepts really did not click with me right away, and it was a lot of just sheer willpower trying to push through and figure things out before the test. Next up is CS1332, also known as Data Structures and Algorithms. This was a three credit class that I had on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9.05 till 9.55, with a recitation on Thursday evenings. The semester that I took at the average GPA was a 3.11, with 38.4% of students getting an A, 31.4% of students getting a B, 16.5% of students getting a C, and 7% of students withdrawing from the class. As a computer science student, I can honestly say that this is one of the most important classes that you'll take in terms of being able to land an internship and doing well in interviews in general. The first part of that class focuses on the data structures and the second part of the class focuses on algorithms, but honestly, looking back, we covered so much stuff in that class, you definitely move at a very quick pace. One of the most important parts of this class is that instead of just learning how to use the different data structures and algorithms, you're actually going to implement them yourself. So one of the assignments might be something like implement a binary search tree from scratch yourself. I could probably make a whole separate video just talking about this class, but for right now, the only thing I'm going to add is that you should definitely make sure you pay attention to this class and really focus on learning these things in depth because it's really going to help you when you try to enter the job market. Alright, so this class is the first lab science that I took at Georgia Tech, and it is Physics 2211, also known as Intro to Physics 1. This was a four credit class, and it is definitely one of the most time consuming classes that I've ever taken at Georgia Tech. We had lectures on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We had a mandatory lab every week on Wednesdays, and they also had a testing period every few weeks on Monday evenings. The semester that I took the class, the average GPA was a 3.31, with 48% of students getting an A, 34.2% of students getting a B, 8.4% of students getting a C, and 5% of students withdrawing from the class. Something that's important to note is that this was the modern section of physics, so for those of you who don't know, Georgia Tech has modern and classical physics, and the main difference is that modern has coding in it and classical doesn't. So one of the components of our weekly labs was generally doing things using vPython, which is really just for physics simulations, and we would also have portions of some of our tests that were focused around doing coding by hand. As someone who's a CS major, this honestly wasn't bad, and this was generally free points. However, if you're someone who really dreads coding, you might want to take a classical section of physics. Overall though, regardless of whether you take modern or classical physics, it is going to be a ton of work. I spent so much time in this class, both in the classroom and also outside it doing homeworks and studying. It is seriously time intensive. The only other computer science class that I had that semester was CS2340, also known as Objects and Design. This was a three credit class and I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm gonna lead this off by saying that this is definitely one of the easiest computer science classes that I've taken at Georgia Tech. So with that being said, the average GPA was a 3.93 for that semester. 92.5% of students had an A, 6.6% of students got a B, only 0.2% of students got a C, and 0.5% of students withdrew from the class. Before you get your hopes up, I should note that the professor who taught this class when I took it has since retired, and I'm pretty sure the entire curriculum has been changed, so don't bet on it being this easy when you take it. One of the main reasons why the average GPA for this class was so high is because there were so many extra credit opportunities available. I remember one of the main ones was if you made an iOS version of your Android app, you could get another 7% of points or something like that. So naturally I made an iOS version of our Android app, and voila, we had an extra 7% of points added to our grades. If I'm being honest, I think the material taught in this class is actually super useful if you want to learn how to design software and systems better, but unfortunately because the average GP was so high, people knew they could get away with not really paying attention, and as a result a lot of people skipped this class, which I really think is a mistake to do. 
The last class of the semester is Psych 1101, also known as General Psychology. So this was a three credit class, but I had it on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9.30 till 10.45 in the morning. This is another class that had a pretty solid GPA. So the average GPA for the class was a 3.44 that semester with 48% of students getting an A, 35.7% of students getting a B, 5.1% of students getting a C, and 4.1% of students withdrawing from the class. I talked about this class a little bit in another video, so I'm not gonna go too in depth, but if you've never taken a psychology class, which I had never taken one before this class, it is truly a fascinating class and you learn a lot of really interesting stuff. I'm pretty sure I needed to take this class because I chose the intelligence thread within computer science, and though I don't think it's been that important in me being able to do well in my other intelligence classes, I definitely think it's been super interesting and I would definitely recommend this class to anyone who's interested in learning a little bit more about psychology. All right, and with that, let's transition now into the second semester of my sophomore year. The first class we're gonna talk about is CS3630, also known as Intro to Perception and Robotics. This was a three credit class that we had on Mondays and Wednesdays from three till 4.15, but we still had to come into office hours pretty frequently to do demos. Before I talk about the demos and the robots though, I'm gonna talk about the grades real quick. So the average GPA that semester was a 3.85, which is actually pretty high, with 82.8% of students getting an A, 12.1% of students getting a B, only 1.3% of students getting a C, and 3.9% of students withdrawing from the class. So the main component of this class was working with partners to develop for Anki Cosmo robots. For those of you who've never heard of them, they're these cute little robots that have little arms that they can lift up and down, and they have treads so they can spin around in circles. And they're mostly designed to be toys, but you can actually develop for them, and that's what we focused on in this class. This was honestly such a great hands-on way to get experience with the concepts that we talked about in the class, and as someone who's really interested in autonomous vehicles and stuff like that, I found myself spending a lot of time working on the robot on my own simply because I just wanted to get the experience and I had a lot of fun playing around with it. I'm pretty sure there were six main projects for the class, and like I mentioned before, you could come into office hours and demo, and one of the really nice things was that you could demo as many times as you wanted. So if you made some mistakes, you could come back to a later office hours and demo it again. However, you just needed to make sure you left enough time because there was a deadline, and if you started too late, you wouldn't be able to keep trying over and over again to get all the points. All right, next up is ISYE 3770, also known as Statistics and Applications. This was my prob stat class. It was three credits, and I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 1220 till 110. The semester that I took it, the average GPA was a 3.06, with 37.8% of students getting an A, 32.4% of students getting a B, 21.6% of students getting a C, and 3.4% of students withdrawing from the class. This is another class that was split into two parts. In the first half, we talked about probability, and in the second half, we talked about statistics. If you're familiar with R, our professor had told us we were going to be using it quite a bit in that class. However, it didn't turn out that we used it all that much. We used it for a couple homeworks, but it didn't play any role in any of our tests. I'm sure every professor lays out their class a little bit differently, but one of the things I didn't like about mine is that in addition to the homework, we only had one midterm and one final, which meant that a ton of your points came from those two things, so if you messed up on either of them, you were pretty much guaranteed to not be able to get an A. The other computer science class that I took this semester was CS2110, also known as Computer Organization and Programming. This was a four credit class that I had on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I had my lectures on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we had our recitations, which we refer to as lecitations because lecture recitation, on Mondays and Wednesdays. The semester that I took the class, the average GPA was a 3.09, with 35.5% of students getting an A, 37.5% of students getting a B, 18.1% of students getting a C, and 3.2% of students withdrawing from the class. This was my first experience with low-level programming, and if you've never taken a class like this or done any low-level programming on your own, you should definitely be prepared for something that's a little bit different than what you're used to. For me, there was definitely a learning curve involved in this class because I was so used to thinking about things at a high level. It was definitely really cool, but it was also really challenging to figure out how these things actually worked at the low level instead of just abstracting all of that away. Back when I took the class, we actually didn't have any tests. We just had a whole bunch of quizzes and a whole bunch of time labs in class. There was typically at least one really hard quiz or timed lab that screwed everyone over. But for the most part, if you studied and prepared for these, you could do pretty well. All right, and the last class of my sophomore year was Physics 2212, also known as Intro Physics 2. Just like the other physics class that I talked about earlier, this was a four credit class that I had on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, with a lab on Wednesdays and a testing period every few weeks on Tuesday evenings. At least for me, this is one of the most challenging classes that I took during my sophomore year, so I'm actually really surprised that the average GPA was not lower than a 3.13. 44.6% of students got A's, 30.3% of students got B's, 13.8% of students got C's, and 3.6% of students withdrew from the class. Like the other physics class, this one had modern and classical sections. Once again, I took the modern section, 
But other than that, there were not that many similarities between the two physics classes. And the main reason for that is because this one was focused on electricity and magnetism, and the other one was focused on mechanics. Like I mentioned before, this is a class that I really struggled with, and unfortunately, I don't think the professor did a great job of explaining some of the concepts, and the book, if I'm being honest, even though it's free, was useless. Having talked to some other students who took the class, I'm definitely not the only one who thought that it was really challenging, and even though I was able to pull out an A, it was extremely stressful, and I would never want to take that class again. Alright guys, if you found that video useful, please hit that thumbs up button, I really appreciate it, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing for new videos every single week. That's it, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.